Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Gotham Knight Season 1, Episode 12. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So first and foremost, obviously, we're picking up in the aftermath of everything that came out about Harvey. And now his name has been thrown in the mud. He's gotten fired as the... Uh, DA, obviously Lincoln's taken over as mayor, he's won the election, so now he's doubling the efforts to hunt down um, Turner and the others, which now they end up finding out, wait, the camera was never destroyed, because I guess uh, Lincoln never found it, because it's like, right, they never learned from uh, Brody where he hid it, the only person who knows where it was hidden was uh, Stephanie, so now they know, like, right, the the signal is showing that that camera is still active, like, uh, and it, it's, it's still getting battery power, so it wasn't destroyed, so the evidence they need against um, the court is still out there, so Stephanie and Harper break into uh, Lincoln's place and end up getting the evidence they need. Problem is, even when this, they've got the evidence, everyone's wearing masks, so there's plausible deniability. At the very least, you're like, it can at least bring the court, which has been hidden in the shadows for so long, bring them into the light. You just can't expose any of who they are, because it's like, hey, even if you say, like, this is Lincoln's voice, they even said, like, yeah, like, Lincoln say, can say it was fake. So, but at least you know that there's this secret, organized cabal behind all of this, but that would only get you so far, so... I did love the interesting discovery that Alan Wayne had like a secret 13th floor uh, and a f uh, that in every building he designed because of 13. It's interesting to know Alan Wayne was super su superstitious and stuff like that and 13 being a bad luck. I want to say, isn't it, is it Japan? I always forget. I want to say it's Japan, but there's some places where like fours, I, I think it's four. It's either three or four. One of them is like a, a kind of in that same vein where it's like, yeah, it's kind of an unlucky number. So like, I don't know. I only know it because of like the third Star, uh, Star Ocean game like references it. Uh, either way, on this secret floor is where Stephanie and Harper find Brody. This episode also answers a question. Well, kind of, I guess, implies that, yes, his mom did know about what he did. I guess... Because I thought Lincoln's the one that did it, but I guess it's like she stabbed him with something to inject. He was saying like, yeah, my mom stabbed me with something that made me this way. I thought Lincoln made that decision. It's like, no, his mom did. So I don't know if she was setting him up to be the um, talent or whether she was just going to like basically her plans for Lincoln, whether she was going to do that for her son too. It seems like she's consistent at the very least if, if that is the case, if that was her plan to like keep him locked up. I mean, he's basically been inside that coffin for two weeks, so... That probably would have been the plan, I guess. It's like maybe she just didn't have time to bury him, or maybe she was gonna. That was kind of his time out. It's like, right, you're gonna stay in this coffin till you learn your lesson, and then I'm gonna let you out, and then I'm gonna give you another shot. Maybe that was her end goal. We really don't fully know. There was a part of me worried, like, not less Brody's kind of a plant or something, but like, like they were setting that up. But it's like, no, you didn't intend for anyone to find Brody in that secret floor, so. It does work out for them because now they have a, a semi-immortal on their side because it's like, yeah, you, you're not going to go out of your way to do it, but Brody could easily be your human shield. Uh, but, you know, it's interesting, too, because the way uh, Rebecca talks about it later on, it does seem like even the Electrum has its limitations because she was like, right, they suffer. Once you suffer a fatal blow, like there are certain blows that the Electrum can't bring you back from. But it also seems like the more the Electrum brings you back, the more it drains out of your system. So like if Brody dies enough times, eventually the Electrum will like, yes, it'll keep him going forever and ever. But the more times he dies, the less Electrum that's in his system. I don't know if it eventually will like after a certain amount of time, will it completely leave his system um, and he needs it constantly reintroduced? Probably not because, well, because Rebecca never had any, you know, well, let's go ahead and get to the reveal of she's Dr. Leviticus, which I was like, that's so interesting. I would have never guessed, but it's like, I guess it makes sense. She is the mad scientist that she is. She's the one that's behind the whole Electrum. She's the one that's kind of, so she's been running the court. Like, it makes you wonder, when does she start the court? She had to start at the court like all those years ago. 
Because she's like, yeah, I don't look a day over 200. It's like, that's kind of wild to think about. But I thought that was kind of interesting, especially because we never really got... I mean, us not seeing Alan Wayne is one thing, but us not seeing Dr. Leviticus at all is really interesting. And just to find out, nope, uh, she is Dr. Leviticus, and she was been behind this for so long. And it, um, she's kind of on her Raz al Ghul, Ra's al Ghul type of bag right now. So that's why I was, my, my, my point for bringing that up is because the last person to have Electrum in them is the most recent talent and he's had it in him for like a hundred years or so, you know, give or take. So she hasn't had any Electrum in that time frame yet. She still maintains. So it is a thing of, it will probably never dissolve from your, I think that answers my question of it might never dissolve out of your bloodline unless you die repeatedly. The more times you die, the more, like, so like you probably have to kill someone, like unless you do a fatal blow, you probably have to, like it's almost like, you know, the whole nine lives thing of like, yeah, so if you have Electrum in your system, you probably do have a certain amount of lives before or like, and probably maybe the more severe the injuries, the more fatal the wounds, the less and less like, the more and more of the Electrum gets used up until, like, it's nothing left in your veins and you drop dead. So, so Brody's, like, semi-immortal. He just has a lar larger, uh, he has a whole bunch of extra lives that normal people don't. It also makes sense why Brody was able to get, like, the refined version of it. Because it's like his mom's already perfected it. So, it makes sense why, like, he's not dealing with the radiation issue that... Uh, Turner was. It's also interesting the other plot threads that end up playing into this. Obviously, Duella and her mom. Um, the whole uh, let's let's kind of tackle that first and foremost. That Duella, you know, burns that signature Joker card. Like it's the thing that it's defined her life for so long. It's she she as um, as. Harvey put it last episode, she defined so much of her life because of that identity of like, yeah, my dad was the Joker. And now it's like, right, a lot of who you who you designed yourself to be, who you kind of were made into, who you kind of made yourself into on some partial level was kind of all a lie. So burning that card um, and for her, it's like, right, I get to start over with my mom. But obviously the payday didn't pay through, which is turning in. um Turner, but Duella's still in the dark about that. It's also interesting, too, the conversation she had with her mom where it's like, right, but uh, Harvey's still alive. And it's like, yes, but the fact is, I, you show me who you really are by pulling that trigger. And I think that's interesting because it is a thing of, yes, Duella didn't kill her dad. But the thing is, by pulling that trigger, she still had the intention of it. So that's still going to mess with her head a little bit, I think. Um. But the moment, like, Duella was like, oh, I'm going to get those watches and stuff. And it's like, yeah, you go ahead and do that. And that look on Jane's face, I'm like, are you really going to do that to your own daughter? And she is. It's like, right. It's like, hey, if we can make it out together, that's awesome. But since we can't, I'm going to be the one to get out. I mean, that's the thing. She was going to, I mean, it's like, I'm curious, was she always going to play after Duella, like, after the, like, uh, Turner situation fell through? Did she are it seemed like she probably already had that plan that she was going to do that to Duella and it just made it easier when Duella was like, oh, I'm going to stay. It's like, well, if you're going to stay here anyway, I might as well take advantage of the situation and get paid because of it. It, it is sad that it's like. Who's to say who Jane became, whether that's all because of Harvey's darker side, gaslighting her and getting her locked up all those years, being locked up in Arkham probably really messed her up. Or maybe she was always like this, you know, and just Duella just only saw the, I mean, very much like her mom, just like Harvey has two sides of him, Jane does as well. And so maybe just like Duella, like kind of lost who she was, maybe her mom is the same way and just kind of like, now it's like, oh, I'm going to be, uh, you know. She's not the mother she tries to pretend to be. Um, and it's it's kind of sad. I'm sure she'll probably try to justify it. Because I was wondering if it's like, are you going to like drug Duella and take her with you anyway? It's like, no, you're going to sell her out for the money because this is the only way you can disappear and start over. It's like, right, you made this whole thing about wanting to start over with your daughter. But I think it's also extra bits of, hey, she wants to stay behind because of her friends. You're... I love you and everything, but you're you're weak. You don't have what it takes to do whatever it takes to survive. Like, but also it's like you kind of do. So it's like, yeah, you'll get locked up, but you'll survive because 
I, I, I put you in, because it's also like, right, you had the Joker pretend to be her dad so she can toughen up so that no one would bother her so she learned how to survive, and that will probably be your undoing. We'll see. I'd, I'd actually reference it previously. I referenced Gotham, how, like, Selena had a complicated relationship with her mom in that show. It's just it's just the interesting, even more direct parallel in that capacity, I think, is interesting. Obviously, she mainly went back for the watches, but she was kind of concerned about everyone else trying to see if they were okay. But then when she learns like what they're actually going to do is like, well, you're going to go after the court. It's just the five of you, the four of you plus Carrie. Wait, uh, Brody's here? You replaced me with a jock. She was kind of offended, even though you were going to leave them. It's just like, but I can't believe you found my replacement already. And you replaced the cool, awesome me with ugh, a jock. But then Turner confronts her and it's just like, right, your mom sold me on. It's like, wait, she, she, well, she didn't know how important you were to me. It's like, well, what do I mean to you? But, you know, it's like, are you, you're willing to leave with her? We could stay. You could stay. We're going to do everything we can to clear our names. And that way you don't have to run anymore, Duella. Like for the first time you can just stay. But for Duella, it's like, she's my mom. And for Turner, it's like, but we're your family too. Like, regardless of how, like, you know, it's you've tried to mitigate it as much as possible, but we've all had an effect on you. You've had an effect on us, uh, you and your crazy, but also we've had an effect on you because Duella isn't the same. Yes, she still has a little bit of that selfish, you know, side of herself that we got to witness in episode two, but we saw how desperate she was to save Turner that it showcases, like, she's not that same person, that she found a way to start caring for someone other than herself, and she started to, you know, you know, we see, like, the way she likes Carrie, and the others have kind of wormed their way into her heart, you know? We don't really know how she feels about Stephanie, but the rest of the crew, like, the rest of the Gotham Knights, we know how she feels about them, so... And at the end of the day, she wanted to come back and help her friends, but her mom kind of got in the way of that. Which is interesting, too, considering, like, hey, Brody's part of the team now. And I, I love the conversation him and Turner have where it's like, right, I chastised you about not knowing your dad was Batman. And now it's like, not only is my dad a bad guy, my mom's the worst of all. She's the head of everything. And I thought I knew my family, and it turns out I don't even know my mom at all. Like, she's this monster, so... But Bro, uh, Turner was like, yeah, but it comes down to once we know what we do is what kind of matters. What, when, when we have that information, our, our parents aren't always, you know, every, you know, everyone's kind of got their secrets and stuff. But the question is what you do once you know it. And Brody's deciding like, hey, I'm going to help try and take down the court, you know, expose them for who they really are. And, um, at the same time, we had Carrie confronted, well, her and her mom kind of go at it because her mom is like, right, there are so many mothers that I have to talk to at the hospital, like, yeah, explaining to them why their baby isn't alive anymore, why their child isn't coming home. And it's like, you're asking me to let you put me in that situation because it's like, you're up here wanting to save so many other children, like so many children, you know, helping out like, you know, m mothers so that they don't lose their children in this whole situation, but what about me? You did at any point in time, did you stop to think about me? Because at, you are not bulletproof, Carrie. Ask Batman. It's like, yeah, but if I could, he would tell me that you shouldn't be fighting the good guys. Like, I'm trying to do what's best for this city because you are willing to. You tirelessly, you push yourself to save as many lives as you can. I'm just, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going about it a different way. It's like, yeah, because uh, what she does, what her mom does, doesn't involve her putting her own life in danger but for Carrie it's like for the greater good it's worth it because if I don't do it who's going to especially in a city that doesn't have its its symbol anymore lost its its Batman you know its heroes so I'll be the one to step up and help the city in whatever way in whatever capacity I can so she ends up taking off regardless of her mom's you know reluctancy so I think I that's kind of a neat parallel between um Jane um Jane and Duella and Carrie and her mom of like that juxtaposition about how they both handle their respective situations with their children, you know, so. And then you also add in like, right, everyone's got parent issues because Turner's got his issues. Yeah, I just referenced this recently when I was talking about the Craven the Hunter trailer about like, right, uh, every, it's it's at the uh, uh, center fold of so many people. It's like mom and dad issues. And it's like literally everyone on this team has mom and dad issues. Um, 
because we still don't know the truth about Turner's biological parents, but obviously the complicated things about him and how he feels about Bruce now because believing Bruce has something to do with his um, mom's, uh, his uh, biological parents' death. Stephanie's on the outs with her parents. Harper and Colin had, had bad blood with their father. Um, Brody's got bad blood with his parents. Carrie's in the complicated spot she is with her mom, but they they have the better relationship out of anyone else because everyone else's relationships with their parents is completely, uh, for a lack of a better term, completely and utterly fucked, you know? So, just kind of an interesting um, development. Circling back to the court, I figured something was up the moment Rebecca's like, hey, I rarely like step out of the shadows. I also love that you do like give yourself the special mask. And she's the one with the gold mask. And it's like, hey, like, um, my husband's become mayor and we've got Electrum. And then she shows off all the talents of like, is she about to kill everyone in this room? And lo and behold, she does. It's like, that's interesting. And it makes sense why she would do it because they are so close to being exposed. Yes, you don't know their identities, but the court has benefited from centuries of being hidden away. And now it is because it's about to be brought into the surface. It's like, if people dig enough, they probably could end up digging up something about each member of the court. But it's also like, yeah, but even if that's not the case, you don't want to take the chance. This group has been able to exist in the shadows and work with its anonymity. And us being brought into the light benefits no one. And to, to kind of uh, correct her course, Rebecca's decided to make Lincoln take the fall. And she's, once again, uh, making the parallel to Brody, which I was like, I wonder is that what she had planned for Brody, where she's like, yo, I'm going to like, Use this poison. It won't kill you because you have Electrum in your uh, system. But at the very least, by the time you come back out of this, they'll think you're dead and they'll bury you. So, yeah, you'll be buried alive. It's like, Jesus. Like, legitimately, was she planning on that for Brody? But if that was the case, why wait the two weeks? That's why I'm like, was it supposed to just be a punishment and she was going to let him out or what? Because she doesn't bring up Brody at all, but she does know he got arrested. So... That was my thing of she didn't have any comments so made me go like, oh, maybe she did know. But now I'm like, maybe that's her first time finding out Brody's still alive because maybe Lincoln hid that from her. But once again, going back to the point of she did stab him. So and the Electrum didn't have the same effect on it like it did. I keep going back and forth, but I'm like, no, 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 no. It has to be she has to know because she's the one that does the concoctions and stuff like Well, it seems like she has other people working on it, but she laid the groundwork for the other scientists to know how to... Uh, use the Electrum and uh, transfer it so it doesn't like, it's pure form will just, you know, give you radiation, but uh, diluting it with other stuff will give you the immortality and stuff, so. But now I'm wondering, like, okay, so you're the only member of the court still alive. It makes sense. Like, it seems like, hey, you might have been the one who started the court, not unless she hide, not unless it was something that belonged to her family and she hide, like took over. Like, it is her legacy. It always has been, but just in what capacity is unclear. But you're the only living member of the court. It's like uh, this potentially you, you're the oldest member and like now the only member. So does she uh, plan on continuing the court with just her and the multiple talents that she brought back? Or is it about um, eventually filling in those ranks again? I, I don't know. I mean, as we see, like all you need is powerful people to fill out those ranks. So that could be, uh, I mean, she's had to start over time and time again, because we found out, interestingly enough, she was married to Alan Wayne, which you're like, oh, interesting. But she got close to Alan because she was trying to destroy him. It's like, what's, what's your family's beef with the Waynes? Like, maybe it's because, like, oh, he knew about the court was going to expose them. So it's like, hey, I'm going to get so, like, I, because I, I love the triple meaning, in fact, oh, double meaning about the court being in the house because like, Hey, the reason why the talent was able to sneak past all, uh, tech, uh, Wayne tower security and stuff is because Bruce was unaware about, um, Alan, um, Wayne's secret floors on, and all the buildings he made. And that's how the talent got in and killed him. But, um, So there's like, hey, the court, the the owl, the talons, the owls or whatever are literally in the house. Well, it has a double meaning because Alan literally got married to Dr. Leviticus. So it's like, man, it's so interesting. It's like, 
you don't think she's actually like, I was like, I was about to say it's like, not unless she's like connected. Like, I don't know if she had any children with Alan. You'd assume so, because she got married at, so it's like, it would seem like the Waynes are directly related to her in that regard, would, would they be? Like, that means, like, she's, like, Bruce's great-great-grandmother, wouldn't that make her that the case? Because, like, she killed, I mean, sure, like, the whole thing was, like, killing Alan after the fact, so not unless he had kids with someone else and got divorced and then got with Dr. Leviticus, or maybe there, after she got what she needed, they broke up and then he married someone else and had kids, I, I don't know. Because it doesn't seem like they're referencing like a, oh, he's an uncle type of situation of like, maybe he had a brother or sister who had kids and they continued on the Wayne legacy. So, because it, once again, it's like great, great grandfather. So it's, it's more direct. So it's like, no, like he did have kids. So once again, that would make her like a great, great grandmother to Bruce, maybe, which is kind of weird and twisted. But once again, I don't fully know her beef with the Wayne lineage and stuff, so... But yeah, um, all of the court is dead, except for Lincoln, but everyone, including Brody, thinks Lincoln's dead. And now it is a situation of, cool, the cops were already called, and now um, the Gotham Knights have gotten arrested. Now, I guess some of the people that were there amongst the court were cops as well. So it's like, cool. There's even like, uh, what was it, like the headmaster at the academy or whatever. I even love Carrie being like, yeah, that tracks why you'd be a member of the court. But it's like, yeah, they, they're politicians, of course, and people in different facets of like power and position in this city are there. And now they're all dead. And now it all falls on the Gotham Knights. So uh, not only they, they won't have to worry about staying in prison for long because the talent is going to come to kill them. And the thing is, they're going to end up ripping through a lot of people in the process to get to them. So a lot of, probably a lot of officers are potentially going to die. Not unless they do it and like try to do what they did in the first episode and hit them in transit type of situation. And I'm like, yeah, park you over and then kill you. We'll see how that all plays out. But um, other than that, we had Rebecca confronting, um, confronting, um, uh, Oh, uh, God, I'm blanking. Uh, Harvey, geez. When he discovered, like, her laboratory, like, where she was working on that stuff, it was in the... That's why she also knows about the floor, because she was married to Alan, so she was there to witness, like, all the secret 13th floors he included in all the buildings, so... And the fact is, this is where a lot of her research ended up happening. It makes sense. She probably, like, slipped away from Alan to come here and research stuff, like, all those years ago. But, um... For her, it's like, right, she wanted to use um, Harvey to be the fall guy, but it, but the problem is she fell in love with him, so maybe he was always a means to an end in the past, but their rekindling of their flames made her go like, right, I actually love you, you're more, uh, you're, uh, you're someone that actually makes me feel something, Lincoln was kind of a means to an end. But for Harvey, it's like, no, like, the fact is you aren't the woman I fell in love with because the woman I fell in love with was never real. You were always, a, you were a mirage, and I'm not going to be with you. I mean, I think it also makes sense considering it's almost playing into, like, his upbringing, too, considering, like, the other person his father was. It kind of plays into, like, right, I've been with someone who isn't, who, you know, who has a dual side to him. The difference is my dad was sick. Your situation is this is who you really are. And the woman I thought you were was just an illusion. So, and she looks so jilted and heartbroken and looks crazy when she's like, oh, really? It's going to be like that? It's like, what are you going to do? Force him to be with you? Because it's like, oh, because she's had to start over so many times. She even says, like, families and stuff. It's like, once again, kind of implying, like, the Waynes were probably her family and, like, the, the, the her descendants and stuff. But it's like, yeah, she had to start over new life, new name, new family over and over and over again for her, uh, you know, every time, like, to kind of hide, hey, I haven't aged a day and kind of hide who I really am, so... A lot of really, really interesting developments. It's going to be interesting to see ultimately where all this ends up taking us 
going forward into the next episode, which is sadly the series finale um, instead of just a season finale because news came out last week that uh, Gotham Knights sadly was canceled. I kept seeing 14 episodes beforehand, but I, I, I was wondering about that, but I looked it up. The next episode is the series finale, sadly, because it felt like with the with the setup of this episode, the way it ended, it felt like we we're going into a season finale, but yeah. Sadly, this is going to be the end of the road. The next episode's the last episode, which is such a bummer because I really like this show. Um, my thought was like, right, the show's reception plus probably not enough people watched it. It seems like, based on what I heard, I think they referenced it in this most recent, uh, this week's episode of Weekly Planet. Apparently, I guess it did do okay number wise, but it's kind of, I think it's kind of like kung fu in that regard of like, yeah, the numbers were good. And I think the same thing for the Winchesters, but the problem is like the CW's restructuring. So once again, the DCU going through what it's going through regardless and the CW getting gutted the way it is, like who knows what that would have meant for this show. Like even if it had continued, it might have only gotten another season, but at the very least it would have gotten another season, which is such a bummer because I must, can only assume, I don't know if anything is going to be resolved. It's probably going to end on a major cliffhanger, especially where Harvey's stories, um, uh, comes into play and I'm sure what that would this will probably be set up for the next part of his journey but we won't get a conclusion to it obviously but it is kind of sad to see things kind of end here but you know we have at least next episode so I'm curious to ultimately see how the season plays out I'm not going to say series because it's just like right they had no intentions of making this a one-off so it is going to end off in a cliffhanger so I'm curious to see how the season is going to um, end and um, you know see what potentially would have been a you know what they potentially set up for what could have been a season two you know but really that's all i wanted to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and good bye